Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today we're going to try to pack this column here, which is a 5 by 100 millimeter tricorn column packed to 8 centimeters with phenyl HP resin. This is the finished product. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is resuspend this resin. So I happen to have a bottle of phenyl HP laying around, and I'm going to resuspend it just by shaking it. Gotta shake it really good. I obviously sped this up. All right. Once we've finished resuspending the resin, we have a slurry. We're gonna pour about 20 mils into a graduated cylinder. It doesn't matter whether I get 20 mils exactly or not. I'm just gonna divide one number by the other and I'm gonna let this settle overnight so I can see what the percent solid versus liquid is. And that'll be my percent slurry. So this is the basic tricorn column. Tricorn columns can handle a lot of pressure, uh, which is the key feature about them. They, this column itself has a inner diameter of five millimeters. This is the bottom adapter, and it's got a little tiny white filter in it. We'll talk more about the filter in a second. So how you fit the, fil the bottom adapter on is you just jam it into the bottom of the column and it's got a gasket on it and then this cap holds it in place. Now, one of the things I didn't do here was there's a tab on the bottom adapter that you're supposed to line up. And that's why I'm having such a hard time screwing down the cap. I did come back later and fix it. All right, so now let's talk about the top adapter. So the top adapter has this inner ring and as you screw the top adapter down, the inner ring recesses further into the top adapter. So you have to line this notch up with the notch on the top of the column. That's the same notch the bottom adapter is supposed to go into. And that will allow the top adapter to fit onto the bed of the resin. So there are two sizes of filter that hold the resin in place. And you can see it once you line them both up together. The larger filters fit on the top adapter and the smaller filters go on the bottom adapter. These things are pretty tiny. Now, the, that's where the filter is supposed to fit, but um, I guess like static electricity is too um, hard and just want, the filter wants to stick onto my gloves. This is the locking mechanism it fits into place and that allows that keeps you from actually turning the top adapter um, why once you finish packing it all right so the other th things you'll need is this column packing adapter and this allows you to put two columns together to have one operate as an upper reservoir and that's what we're going to do today because I want to pack this to eight centimeters it's pretty high all right so that's what we'll put on the chromatography system. I like to use the zip tie. You'll know what it's for when you see it. And then a bent little piece of metal, I used a bent needle, is great for when you have to dig a filter out of the column. Okay. The resin settled overnight. We ended up with the bed resting at 15 mils and the total volume in the cylinder is 20. That means we have a 75% slurry. Now we're going to find out how much slurry we need to use to pack this column. We're going to find the cross-sectional area to start. So we'll multiply the radius squared times pi for 0.2 mils per centimeter. We're going to take that and multiply it by the final packed bed volume we want, which is the height is 8 centimeters, so the final packed bed volume is 1.6 mils. So it's a pretty tiny column. Now it's a guess but the bed tends to compress about 15% under pressure. So we're gonna multiply 1.6 times 1.15, which will give us an initial unpacked bed volume of 1.9 mils. Since the slurry is a 75% slurry, we're gonna divide 1.9 by 0 0.75, which means we need to measure out about 2.5 mils of slurry. So now I'm gonna to try to actually pipette two and a half mils of slurry onto the column, and it's harder than it looks. First little bit goes pretty well, but then 
it arcs, like it sticks to the glass and it doesn't go down. So I get a drop of it going out to the side. So this is what I use the zip tie for. Kind of use it to push the resin down a little bit to move the air to the side, I guess. And then I'm gonna carefully pipette some more. I'm trying to run the resin down the side of the glass tube, but it's so tiny. I end up getting another arc. So I end up doing this until I get the column filled. And I also will use a squirt bottle in order to fill up what's left of the column. And then I'm still ha gonna have to use the zip tie to get any air bubbles out, but I'm basically just gonna fast forward from here. We have the column pretty much completely filled with water. Let's talk about putting the top adapter on. Here's a close-up. The adapter has an inner disc with a notch. We have to make sure that this notch lines up with the notch on the threaded portion of the column. And then as we fit it into place, we are going to be doing that without a filter on it. And that's because we're not going for the final pack. We're going to slowly screw it in so that the notch stays in place. And it can be really hard to fit this thing on here so that it screws properly. So sometimes it helps to take it off, reset the inner disc, and try it again. I think I got it on the second try. There we go. And hold on to it really well. Put that guy into place. You know you have the adapter properly in the column when it stays perfectly upright. It isn't you know, off to an angle. That looks really good. I reset the camera so you can see that there's resin coming out of the top adapter. And this is just because we don't have a filter on the top adapter. If we put it on right now, the filter would pop off the top adapter and float down into the column. So we just have to be careful to only run the column down on the chromatography system. One of the things we haven't done so far is to figure out what flow rate we're gonna run the new column at. So we'll look in the instruction booklet and we will find a recommended flow rate that's a linear flow rate, which is in centimeters per hour. For the new column, we're gonna to have to calculate what the flow rate is in mils per minute. So now that we know what the recommended flow rate is, which is a linear flow rate, we have to convert that to a volumetric flow rate in mils per minute. So we're gonna do that by multiplying 100 centimeters an hour by the cross-sectional area, which is 0.2 mils per centimeter. Uh, we calculated that earlier. And then we're going to divide that by the number of minutes in an hour, 60, and we're going to end up with 0.33 mils per minute. The reason we do that in chromatography is because the resonance time on a column stays the same regardless of the column size. And this helps you scale up your purifications or scale them down if you need to do some kind of research. So for columns of other sizes, like for example, when it's 2.6 centimeters wide, 100 centimeters an hour is 8.8 .8 mils per minute. For 14 centimeters, it's 256 mils per minute. All right, I just wanna say one more thing about beads floating around in the slurry before we put this column on the system and start running it. We want to avoid letting beads settle by gravity. And that's because it can cause obvious problems with uneven distribution because heavier beads will tend to settle on the bottom and lighter beads will tend to settle on the top. This can cause back pressure issues. It could potentially even cause different results, but with preparative chromatography, generally we're not gonna be that sensitive to this, but we are gonna be definitely very sensitive to back pressure problems. Usually we prefer to either flow or mechanically pack a column, and this causes uh, a much more even distribution in the resin bed. All right, so I have the column on the chromatography system with the syringe on the bottom, so I can take all the time I need, nothing will flow at the bottom. And I've turned on the flow rate to 0.33 mils per minute, 
And what I'm doing now is just waiting for all of the air in the line from the injection valve to come out of the tube. And then I'm gonna put it onto the top of the column. But before I do that, I'm just going to push ever so tiny amount up on the syringe so I get a little tiny drop at the top of the column. Again, this drop is gonna have a little bit of resin in it, but I'm going flowing, the, I'm running the chromatography system in downflow, so it should be fine. I won't get any resin in the chromatography system doing that. All right, once I've got it attached, uh, all I have to do now is put the tube on the bottom on and I can wait for the column, the resin bed to settle. This is a time lapse of the resin bed settling. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, if you're a chromatography nerd like I am. When the resin bed is done settling, I'm gonna check the height, which looks pretty good. Now I'm going to reconfigure the column so that I can remove the top packing adapter and packing reservoir um, and also take the top adapter off. Okay. Then I'm going to put a syringe on the bottom just to secure the liquid in place, which I probably should have done first. Now we're gonna put the top adapter on with the filter. So I've got the filter here and I'm gonna wet it. This will allow it to actually stick to the top adapter. Unlike before when I was trying to show you what it was like, it was just sticking to my finger, the glove on it. So there we go, we're gonna fit it into place and we're gonna line up the notch again so that it fits into place. And we're gonna carefully screw it on here. You get more than one chance. It feels like you only have one chance to do this right, but you, you really do have more than one chance. This is where having that bent needle in it can really come in handy because a lot of the times you'll take the top adapter off and it'll the filter will just stay in the solution that the resin is in. Um, but it looks like we got it the first time, so I'm just gonna screw the adapter all the way down so it's on top of the bed, and then I'm gonna screw it just a little bit more to crush it, and we've got it. All right, we'll put the lock on top of the adapter just to keep us from you know, uh, turning it anymore and messing up the resin bed, and we'll hook it back up to the chromatography system so we can run it a little bit longer and that will help us make sure that the bed is stable in case we need to do some readjustments or anything. Well, here's the final packed column. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any ideas for other videos, just leave a comment at the bottom and good luck with your purifications.